In the headlines, federal government and Nigerian Labor Congress meeting over fuel subsidy removal deadlocked as fuel price hits over 700 naira per litre. Removal of fuel subsidy leads to food prices, transport fares hike. ASU sues federal government over alleged discriminatory treatment of members. And on the foreign scene, Zimbabwe to hold general election on August 23rd. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Now the news in detail. Nigerians will have to wait a bit to know if the 150% increase in fuel prices announced by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited on Wednesday will stand. A meeting between organized labor and representatives of the federal government over the status of petrol subsidy ended in a deadlock on Wednesday night. Kende Amodu reports. After some hours behind closed doors, members of organized labor coming out of the meeting with representatives of the federal government over the disputed issue of petrol subsidy. From the look of things, there is no respite in sight for Nigerians who are shocked by the sudden withdrawal of fuel subsidy and now have to deal with the unpleasant consequences. The two parties have refused to shift ground. Federal government is hoping to continue negotiating and provide interventions that will ease the suffering of Nigerians. We are looking at the peace, progress and stability of Nigeria. And that is what is paramount. Now, of course, the NNPC uh, uh, MD is here, the, Mr. Kiyari. Uh, we cannot go into any details now because talks are still ongoing. We cannot finish everything in one, at one sitting. But organized labor is accusing the federal government of putting the cart before the horse and adjusting prices of fuel before the meeting, thus forcing them to negotiate at one point. There was no conversation whatsoever. So for over a year, there wasn't formal engagements and formal meetings. And because there were there were informal engagements and meetings, that is why we found ourselves here today. If we had met before, there, I mean, before now, we could have uh, proposed a lot of things. Just as the CNG has said, we have experts in our means who could have profiled some solutions on even the CNG, how it could be done faster, what are the things that could be done. Because our own is how do we protect the Nigerian workforce. Remember 2011, we were here, this compound, and we agreed on some principles, repair or refineries, you know, to start operation, latest by December last year. They were not done. We agreed on issue of CNG. You know, the CNG product is to is eco-friendly and is cheaper than the PMS that sell, sell now. And some people say they can convert within three months. If we have done all these things, what will we be calling a uh, subsidy? The Dangote refinery is there to be producing. If any of these refineries are producing, who have all this challenge? Organized labor leaders are not mincing words. They want the federal government to revert to status quo. They also want government to think of alternatives. The subsidy provision has been made up to the end of June. And before then, conscious people, labor, management, government, should be able to think of what will happen at the end of June. You don't start it before the time. The crisis emanating from the removal of fuel subsidy is a critical asset test for President Bolati Nundu. The federal government is optimistic that the arm pass will be amicably resolved, but is not budging for now on its resolve to stop payment of petrol subsidy. From State House Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. Transport fares in Kaduna State have gone up following fuel price hike. Trust TV's Bello Musa reports that commuters at motor parks find it difficult to pay fares for intercity shuttle service due to the increase. Pump price of the fuel per litre at the filling stations in Kaduna is sold 550 naira now from 195 naira it was sold on Tuesday. However, queues at the filling station are disappearing now as the new price regime commences. The hike has pushed transport fares up and passengers in the state are expressing anger over 
the development. Before it was uh, a bit kind of uh, reasonable, but now the whole thing has just suited up. From the initial 3,000 we pay, we are paying 4,000, which is too much. Because I'm going to Mina now, it used to be 2,5, tops 3,000. But now they are telling us to pay 4,000. So right now, we just want to follow uh, along. Maybe we we'll get to Deco and then get another vehicle to Mina. But as you can see, the thing is so annoying. The transport fee has really added up due to the subsidy removal by the president and it has really affected the transportation seriously. Like where you go to, you pay 100 naira, it has added to 200 and so on like that. So it's really stressful. It's affecting us seriously. We normally pay 3,000 from Cardinal Tizan for but now it's 4,000 naira. I was not expecting to pay 4,000 naira. I had to go and withdraw another 1,000 to hide and pay my transport fare. The increase is affecting economic activities as these passengers appeal to the government to ease their suffering. If the government are going to do something like this, they would have given uh, uh, people notice ahead of time instead of just taking people unaware like this so that at least you have it at the back of your mind that okay, something like this is going to happen instead of taking you unaware. I want the government to, first of all, initiate a a very good terrain for us in terms of uh, the employment and then uh, the cost of things the border i think they should try and just focus on that aspect uh, the government just need to just uh, regulate these web marketers i think that's just what they need to do because it's from the web marketers that these ones have their own this to increase if the web marketers don't increase prices i don't think they, they will increase their price few vehicles are seen on the road in kaduna metropolis as many motorists said, they cannot afford the new price. Bella Musa, Trust TV in Kaduna. In the same vein, Nigerians in the nation's capital have been reacting to the adjustments in the price of petrol by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. The adjustments followed President Tinubu's announcement in his inaugural address that the fuel subsidy regime has ended. Chamunda Bank speaks with some residents of the FCT on the NNPCL's new price regime. The report. In a press statement signed by the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Garbadin Mohammed, the NNPC Limited confirmed that it has affected some adjustments in the price of PMS across the country. Although Garbadin's press release did not include the new prices, an NNPC Limited notice containing the prices indicated that the NNPC Limited jacked the price from the initial 194 naira per litre to as much as 537 naira per litre for the FCT. The development has not gone well with most Nigerians who have been reacting to the new price regime. So I went to uh, AA Rano this morning uh, along the Kobay Expressway by Katampo Extension. I bought it 540 naira. It will not even reach me that uh, three days, four days, you don't finish now. No, I not bought today. I not bought 500, but this morning I bought 195. So I go come and say they want to increase, but I don't know the other they don't increase. I, I'm not proud. I, I think I, I bought almost 18,000 this morning. I'm not up to, not, not to have a tank. And before I buy 15,000, 15,000 will fill my, my bag. So I, when I had none that, that they were that giving them all that, they said, let me come out. What? At least, at, at least I will use for a week now. I bought my own fuel there, 537 naira. But we actually believe that it's rumor that people have been saying. We believe that as time goes on, because people learn that the subsidy will be removed and they, are, they have the intention of being increasing the money. Other experts and stakeholders have maintained that though subsidy removal needs to be carried out for the purpose of economic development, it must be done in phases to reduce the direct impact on Nigerians. Actually, our business is going to be down because for my own office now where we supply goods, now we cannot be able to supply today. One customer will come buy some things. We supply normal price like 5,000, 10,000. Where would they go 10,000? Now we cannot go 10,000 again. My, my message that they will try to, to cushion the, the effect on the masses because everything, it will bulk, bulk, fall on the masses. You can just imagine people that are picking people from here to Wuse here. 200 naira, any time from beggar, 300. Why is no more than 50 naira before? So you can just imagine. You can't even use it for anything. Because if you calculate it, um, 537 naira, how many liters? 
and I bought about 6,000 naira a day. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Labour Congress has since rejected the new price adjustment by the NNPC Limited, with the president, Joe Ajero, arguing that fixing of prices is not something that the government can unilaterally decide on. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Academic Staff Union of Universities has filed a lawsuit against the federal government over discriminatory, unfair and illegal treatment of its members. The senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, filed the suit on Tuesday at the National Industrial Court in Abuja, the nation's capital, on behalf of ASU. According to a statement made available to newsmen on Wednesday, those joined in the suit as defendants are the former ministers of Labour and Employment, Justice, as well as the Accountants General of the Federation. He also wants the court to determine whether the members of ASU are not entitled to payment of their salaries for the months of February to October 2022 forthwith. Falana said the Minister of Labour and Employment specifically instructed the Accountants General of the Federation not to pay the members of ASU for the period of the industrial disharmony. National Industrial Court had on Tuesday held that the government's no-work, no-pay rule was perfectly legal. The Northern Elders Forum have urged President Bola Tinubu to fulfill his campaign promises on security and poverty alleviation. The forum noted that Tinubu had made a number of key commitments and promises to Nigerians, expressing hope that he would honor them faithfully. NEF, in a congratulatory uh, statement to President Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shatima, reminded them of the oaths they took, which must remain their guide in office until their last days. The statement signed by the Director of Publicity and Advocacy of the Forum, Hakim Baba Ahmed, said the Forum reminded Tinubu of his promise to take insecurity, poverty and high-quality governance as priorities and commended him for his vision of rediscovering Nigeria's greatness, which will be reflected in the lives of ordinary Nigerians. The forum said issues such as inclusion, ensuring justice and fighting corruption should be prioritized as well. Policies that compound poverty should be avoided, and where difficult decisions need to be taken, they should be accompanied by compassion, sensitivity and adequate public awareness. Some residents of Zamfara State want the newly sworn in governor, Dauda Lowell, to prioritize the fight against insecurity to guarantee the safety of the lives of citizens. They stated this while sharing their expectations from the new administration in the state with Trust TV. The report. Zamfara State has been all progressive Congress APC state. But in the March 18th governorship election, the people decided to vote for the opposition's People's Democratic Party's candidate, Dauda Lawal, who emerged winner of the election. The new governor, shortly after his swearing in as the fifth governor, had said his administration is on a rescue mission in the state, stressing that he is aware of the challenges bedeviling the state, particularly banditry, kidnapping for ransom and cattle rustling, among others, which he is poised to address to improve the lives of the people. It is against this backdrop that some residents have been speaking about their expectations from the new administration, which ushered in Dauda Lowell and his deputy. Abba Kabara, Abdullahi Chekwa and Ibrahim Kanuma said the issue of security is key and therefore call on the new governor to channel energies and resources to tackle the insecurity which they believe once addressed will enhance agriculture because farmers will have access to their farmland. I had him saying, you are in the immediate energy and agriculture, I had him said that we will provide government to provide youth employment, which I feel in my, I feel that government cannot provide uh, employment. You should have said that government should you know, provide the environment, enable the environment, to engage the youth in, in a profitable, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, economic activities so that they can be self-reliant. There is a lot of education. Let us look at sector by sector, educational sector. We have the common standard of education is an issue that if you look at the sector, you need to have some prestige, 
almost with the extra time to keep the security. We have just revived them for that. At least to allow the investors to allow security to be there. Because what we as not as, you know, once the security is restored, I will be happy with it. Our so, uh, major expression is to make sure that the security is there. Residents of northwestern state of Nigeria have high hopes for better days because they believe the new governor possesses the strong political will to address the challenges being faced in the state, especially the insecurity which, according to them, the outgoing governor did not handle properly. Governor Obasani holds the first security meeting at the Kaduna State Government House on May 31, 2023. The first security meeting with heads of security agencies is part of the governor's resolve to engage with them on how to tackle the security challenges confronting the state. Kaduna State Commissioner of Police, the Director of Department of State Services and the Controller of Immigration Service as well as the General Officer Commanding One Mechanized Division Air Force and Navy Commandants of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps and the State Vigilante Service attended the meeting. During the meeting, the governor received briefings on the security challenges arising from banditry, kidnapping, communal disputes, phone snatching, the looming threat of the recent fuel shortage and the activities of notorious urban gang popularly known as Sarasuka. Speaking to reporters after the meeting, Governor Sani pledged his administration's total support to security agencies to enable them to discharge their duties effectively. He assured the public that his administration will support the security agencies to do their work and at the same time engage the people in the efforts of the government to rid Kaduna State of all forms of criminality. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. We take a look at efforts to reduce the burden of cervical cancer. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our major stories. We told you that federal government and Nigerian Labour Congress meeting over fuel subsidy removal deadlocked as fuel price hits over 700 naira per litre. You also heard that removal of fuel subsidy leads to food prices, transport fares hike. Moving to health, the federal government says it is set to introduce the human papillomavirus vaccine into Nigeria's EPI schedule as part of efforts to reduce the burden of cervical cancer in the country. The project, which is anchored by the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, is in two phases, with the 16 Phase 1 states expected to begin in September 2023. Aisha Salihu reports that stakeholders are recommending the provision and distribution of free vaccines at primary healthcare centers for girls aged 9 to 14 years. The report. Cervical cancer is the only type of cancer caused by a particular type of the human papilloma virus. It ranks as the second most frequent cancer among women in Nigeria and the second most frequent cause of cancer deaths among women between 15 and 44 years of age. The HPV vaccination is said to prevent more than 90% of cancers caused by HPV from ever developing. This advent of uh, uh, human papilloma virus vaccine especially the quadrivalent and even the 
the uh, the the night one. Uh, this is also very very good because it's going to be a game changer to prevent the uh, the the incidence of uh, cancer of the cervix in the environment. The vaccine is targeting children aged 9 to 14 years before their sexual debut. Uh, now, as a sexually transmitted infection, the HPV is very common, such that by the time people are in their adulthood, many people have been exposed. The vaccine protects against some forms of HPV. There are other types of HPV. There are over 14 types that cause cancer. The vaccine prevents against four or nine, develop de depending on which one that you use. So by using the vaccine, you potentially remove the kinds of cancer that those ones can cause. The disease is, however, said to be one of the most preventable cancers among women if detected early, as routine screening is believed to drastically save lives. You could go testing. If you test and you have not been exposed to these cancer uh, causing serotypes, you can take the vaccine. But then you would have to pay. This one that we are ruling out is for the children. Well, if we source it ourselves and uh, purchase, definitely they are going to pay. But not at, at it is going to be pocket friendly. Screening must still continue, just in case a woman is exposed to other types of viruses not prevented by the vaccine. So has the virus started causing some problems on your cervix? If it has started causing some problems, it doesn't go into cancer straight away. It starts causing little, little problems which can be treated in under 10, 15 minutes. High-risk HPVs cause about 5% of all cancers worldwide, with an estimated 570,000 women and 60,000 men getting an HPV-related cancer each year. In Nigeria, with a population of nearly 200 million people, complex diseases such as cancer are currently emerging as critical health care priority. But low socioeconomic status is associated with increased incidence of and mortality from cervical cancer. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. The French government has reiterated its readiness to partner the Quara state government on agriculture and education to ensure food security and enhanced education. The French Minister of Trade for Development, Francophone and International pa Partnership, Dr. Chrysula Zakharopoulou, stated this during the signing of two agreements between the state and French government at Government House Ilorin. The report. The two agreements signed by the Quara State Government and French Government is on strategic partnerships involving the use of Innovation Hub for knowledge transfer as well as development of the Lata Grazing Reserve for large-scale livestock production. Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak signed on behalf of the State Government while the French Minister of State for Development, Francophone and International Partnerships, Dr. Chrysola Zakharopoulou, Inked the deal for the French side at a brief ceremony witnessed by several officials in Ilori. The French Minister of Trade said should, she is impressed with the determination of Quara government to develop the state and reiterates the readiness of French government in this regard. She also said the Quara state agricultural transformation plan is a big boost for development in this state. You know how important is the African continent and uh, particularly Nigeria for President Macron. So I can uh, feel the energy, the creativity, and the potential that this uh, region offers. And um, I look uh, forward to discovering uh, a few vision projects during my visit today particularly in the field of agriculture, that is uh, a main uh, 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 priority for your government, and you have right, but also for cultural industries. The governor, for his part, assured that the government will partner any stakeholder that will engender growth in all sectors of the state and thanked the French government for its efforts and interest in this state. It's not just to, 
encourage youths, but to put them in position of leadership, and women to put them in the right position of leadership so that they can make um, the right decisions, especially in education development, in innovation, technology, commercial agriculture, one of the reasons we're here today, um, and sustainable development goals in general. The MOU signing was followed by a brief inspection of the Dobi studio featured in Lori Visual Arts Centre, one of Abdul Razak's signature projects which seeks to promote creative industry using cotton-edge technology. The delegation also visited the Innovation Hub and the Cultural and Rural Management Training Institute in Ilori. On the foreign scene, President Emerson Nangawa said on Wednesday that Zimbabwe will hold its presidential and parliamentary elections on August 23rd as the southern African country continues to battle a raging economic crisis. Nangawa, who was elected president in 2018, will be seeking a second term in office. His election followed a military coup that deposed Robert Mugabe in 2017. The 80-year-old main rival is a 45-year-old lawyer and pastor, Nelson Chamisa, who leads the newly formed Citizens Coalition for Change. The opposition accuses the party in power, ZANU-PF, of repression against political opponents. And finally, in sports, Nigeria's under-20 women's football team, the Falconets, will face their Ghanaian counterparts in the final match of the first edition of the Wafu B under-20 women's tournament on Saturday. Nigeria defeated the Republic of Benin 3-0 in the semi-finals of the event on Wednesday to set up a clash against the hosts. Their game at the Babayara Stadium in Kumasi saw Amina Bello open scoring 20 three minutes into the game. Esther Onyenezide increased the tally via penalty kick in the 34th minute before scoring her second for the night in the 62nd minute of play. Meanwhile, Nigeria's Chinyere Kalu was selected as the most valuable player of the match. Ghana won the first semi-final match after defeating Burkina Faso's Dames 3-1 to reach the final. The Nigerian team have had a 100% record so far in the tournament, winning all games at the group stage before meeting the Republic of Bene in the semi-finals. The third place match of the event will feature the Republic of Bene and Burkina Faso on Saturday also. The tournament, which began on May 20, will end on Sunday. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.